Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject failure analysis and prevention. And uh, this is the very last presentation related with this subject. Uh, we have talked about the various aspects related with the um, failures like the fundamental sources of the failures and how to investigate. So, the general procedure of the uh, failure analysis also we have talked apart from the few uh, examples. Now, we will see uh, sometimes uh, the failure of the sum of the components take place uh, under very unique conditions like the component is subjected to the certain loading conditions. even if it is having some of the notches, uh, the composition, mechanical properties, microstructure, the gaseous content, everything is fine. But when we put in service, see this the new component when it is put in service having everything in perfect form. Uh, this kind sometimes the component during the service when it is when it is exposed to the a particular kind of environment like uh, when it is subjected to the high temperature or when it is subjected to the uh, some specific environment uh, like liquid nitrogen like li uh, sorry liquid metal neutrons uh, the hydrogen so uh, these are the specific environmental these are the temperature related or when the component is subjected to uh, the deformation so uh, under these uh, unique set of the conditions, sometimes the same component which was perfect in the beginning sometimes shows the increase in strength, reduction in toughness or impact resistance, reduction in ductility. So, this variation in the uh, properties of the material when it is exposed or of a steel when it is exposed to the uh, unique range of the temperature, unique environment or subjected to some kind of the deformation, then uh, this kind of the change in uh, the mechanical properties of the steel is known as embrittlement. And uh, if we see it is just the environmental exposure which is given otherwise there is no change the composition is same there may be minor modification in the mechanic microstructural aspects which is governing the mechanical properties so but most of the time uh, we are not uh, able to understand what is uh, the cause of the failure because otherwise there is no um, uh, there is no unique uh, observation or there is no unique uh, finding as far as uh, uh, the failure analysis is concerned for some some of the uh, components. So, uh, uh, like the component fracture is taking place in very brittle manner, while uh, while the component which was uh, the metal of the component which was used for making making it had sufficient the ductility it had sufficient toughness, but when uh, it, it had sufficient mechanical properties in terms of toughness, ductility, hardness, strength etcetera and uh, required the microstructure, required chemical composition, everything was fine, but when it was put in service, it failed in brittle manner. So, uh, the component which was ductile, which was tough and subsequently failing in the brittle manner. Uh, really uh, increases us to see what kind of changes in the material are taking place due to which uh, it is changing its uh, behavior. So, uh, for that uh, for that we need to really study the, the, the kind of uh, the things which change the behavior of the material uh, during the service either due to the exposure at high temperature due to the deformation or due to the particular kind of the environmental condition and that is why we need to see what are the factors lead to the embrittlement of the 
steels. So, there are different grades of the steels which are sensitive for the different kinds of the embrittlements. So, here what we will see uh, uh, like there are three factors one is temperature as I have said, then there is a deformation and there is uh, environment in which the exposure is being given. Accordingly, the different kinds of the uh, embrittlements I will be mentioning first like uh, the strain age embrittlement and the low carbon steel is sensitive for this kind of embrittlement, embrittlement. mostly these are the rimmed or semi rimmed steels uh, which have the oxygen and uh, nitrogen content uh, then quench H embrittlement and low carbon steel is also sensitive for uh, this kind of embrittlement. Then there is a tamper embrittlement. Tamper embrittlement is uh, observed in case of the carbon steels, uh, then low alloy steels. Then uh, we have the 350 degree centigrade embrittlement. Uh, which is observed in case of the high strength low alloy steels. Then there is a 450 to 500 degree centigrade embrittlement. Uh, this is observed in case of the ferritic stainless steel. Then uh, we have the sigma face embrittlement. This is typically observed in case of the austenitic and the ferritic stainless steels which are high chromium uh, means the high chromium steels. Uh, then there is one more uh, embrittlement which is called graphitization. Uh, this is observed in carbon steels as well as carbon molybdenum steels and then there is uh, uh, then there is uh, uh, there are few uh, environment assisted uh, then there are few environment assisted embrittlements environment uh, assisted embrittlements these are neutron embrittlement uh, mainly observed in case of the nuclear power plants where there is a uh, absorption of the neutron of the components which are being used then there is hydrogen embrittlement due to the excessive concentration of the hydrogen in the steel either absorbed or in dissolved condition. Then there is a stress corrosion embrittlement and the liquid metal embrittlement. So, liquid metal embrittlement like steel is sensitive for the embrittlement by the liquid copper or the liquid zinc. Similarly, aluminum is sensitive for the Hg or uh, uh, mercury. So, these are the various kinds of the uh, embrittlements which are experienced by the steel under the different uh, conditions uh, of the temperature, environment and the deformation. Now, I will be taking up one by one these uh, embrittlements and also we will see that how uh, do these affect the performance of the steel. Uh, in terms of the uh, mechanical properties. So, uh, we will be starting with the strain age embrittlement, strain age. Uh, as I have said, uh, this kind of the embrittlement is experienced in case of the uh, rimmed or uh, semi killed steel. Uh, in these uh, both these steels the oxygen concentration is oxygen and nitrogen concentration is more. So, uh, in this case what happens that when the component is deformed, um, deformed by a certain amount and then uh, the component is left. So, the default left in under the ambient conditions or at a high temperature for some time, then it leads to the increase in uh, yield strength and uh, uh, sometimes reduction in the 
ductility. So, uh, basically increase in strength and the hardness is accompanied with this increase in yield strength and the hardness is observed Maybe some kind of the loss in toughness uh, may take place. So, uh, what happens when we deform a component uh, it uh, produ deformation leads to the plastic deformation leads to, leads to the generation of the dislocations in the material due to the deformation and the dissolved gases uh, like oxygen and nitrogen they, uh, they uh, occupy or the lock the dislocations being created uh, through the diffusion and so the locking of these uh, dislocations will uh, uh, reduce the dislocations movement and which is necessary for the plastic uh, deformation. So, uh, in case of the semi killed or the rimmed steel where these gases are present they easily diffuse at the edge of these dislocations and they tend to lock them in order to facilitate in order to uh, restrict the movement of the dislocations which in turn increases the yield strength uh, but this kind of the uh, this kind of uh, uh, since here the diffusion of the oxygen and the nitrogen is involved so it's uh, the process is slow at room temperature uh, and it may take like a few hours to the few days in order to have the effect of the strain aging. Uh, but when it is done, uh, when the after deformation, if the component is exposed at a high temperature, so it immediately causes uh, the strain aging effect within one minute of the exposure at a high temperature. So, at a high temperature, uh, the strain aging effect is uh, uh, very fa uh, faster than that at the room temperature and uh, the killed steels which have the uh, deficiency of the oxygen they are less sensitive for the strain age embrittlements. So, this is the one type of the embrittlement uh, then another one is the quench edge embrittlement and uh, carbon steel is also sensitive for this kind of the embrittlement and uh, this is caused by the two uh, situations uh, one is uh, uh, in case of the quench age embrittlement uh, like uh, we know that the steels uh, having very limited carbon at a room uh, can dissolve the limited very, car very limited carbon at room temperature this is 727 degree centigrade and this is 910 degree centigrade this is alpha and this is eutectoid and here uh, this is eutectoid point so uh, uh, so this is the lower critical temperature in iron carbon diagram here this is the carbon content and here this side we have temperature so when the steel of uh, steel is quenched rapidly from the lower critical temperature from below the lower critical temperature. So, whatever carbon content which is high uh, like it is uh, 0 0.05 and here at room temperature it is 0 0.08. So, the rapid cooling or the quenching from the lower critical temperature leads to the super saturated solid solution of carbon in uh, BCC alpha iron that is ferrite. So, uh, this uh, this one the, which is the, the this ferrite which is super saturated of the carbon uh, this uh, starts uh, um, uh, this starts uh, rejecting the excess carbon gradually uh, under the room temperature conditions and which leads to the the two effects one is uh, uh, the, the one is uh, like the precipitation of carbon uh, at the dislocations and once the dislocations are blocked due to the precipitation of the carbon. So, it will be resisting the movement of dislocations and thereby increasing the yield strength and uh, then another one is the precipitation hardening uh, due to the uh, rejection of the carbon. Uh, uh, so, these are the two uh, regions which are attributed to the increase in yield strength, increase in hardness and uh, some loss of the toughness due to the um, re, uh, due to the rejection of carbon from the uh, ferrite. Uh, uh, this kind of the effect is especially observed when the quenching is taking place uh, 
uh, quenching of the low carbon is still is taking place from the low higher low critical temperature like say uh, 650 to 7 uh, 27 degree centigrade. But if the quenching is taking place from say 550 degree centigrade or less, then the effect of the quench edging is negligible because it reduces the carbon which is uh, available with the ferrite content. So, the extent of the supersaturation of the ferrite with the carbon is reduced if uh, the fast cooling is uh, if the fast cooling or the quenching is taking place from the lower temperatures. Uh, so, uh, to, uh, and there is another aspect about the carbon content, the steels with the uh, carbon uh, in the range of the 0.04 to 0.12, uh, they are more sensitive uh, for this kind of the embrittlement 0.04 to 0.12 percent of the carbon, they are sensitive for this kind of the uh, aging. Uh, if the carbon content is greater than 0.1, then the, the extent of sensitivity reduces for the quench edge embrittlement. The next one is the blue uh, embrittlement, blue uh, embrittlement. Uh, the blue embrittlement is just like uh, the uh, accelerated strain aging. In case of the accelerated strain aging uh, uh, at a high temperature, uh, so uh, straining uh, will be developing the um, uh, dislocations and uh, at a high temperature uh, in the range of uh, like say 232 to uh, 371 degree centigrade, the faster movement of the uh, of the uh, first movement of the uh, solute impurities in the steel uh, will be leading to the locking of the dislocations at a much higher rate and thereby it will be um, decreasing the uh, ductility, decreasing the toughness and increasing the strength. Uh, uh, since this at this temperature range the steel appears to be of the blue in color and that is why it is called the blue embrittlement and this is uh, attributed to the uh, precipitation of uh, some of the uh, compounds uh, at the grain boundaries at the this critical temperature range of 232 to 371 uh, degree centigrade. Then uh, we have the temper embrittlement. So, uh, blue embrittlement will be happening over a range of 232 to 371 degree centigrade probably pr primarily due to the precipitation of some hard constituents and uh, now this will be experienced by both low carbon steels as well as the low alloy steels. Uh, then we have the temper embrittlement. Uh, the temper embrittlement uh, happens in the two ways, uh, you know uh, like this is uh, typically observed in case of the tempering heat treatment and the tempering heat treatment is typically carried out below the lower critical uh, temperature. This is say iron carbon diagram, so this is the lower critical temperature. So, uh, like say it can be carried out from 200 degree centigrade to almost about 650 degree centigrade, this is the range of normal tempering temperature and uh, so uh, uh, as per the requirement uh, of the properties, uh, the tempering temperature is selected suitably because the variation in uh, the toughness and the hardness goes in like this. This is the hardness variation and this is the tempering temperature say varying from the 100 degree centigrade to 600 degree centigrade. And uh, this is uh, say for uh, any medium carbon steel or high carbon steel starting from 65 uh, HRC uh, for the hardness and uh, for uh, uh, fit pound uh, is the unit uh, say for the toughness if you mention from like say 20, uh, 40, 60 and 65. So, there is a sharp drop in the hardness and uh, the increase in toughness over a range of the uh, like say uh, 100 to 200 degrees or uh, 200 to 300 degrees centigrade, there is a, some drop in the toughness thereafter uh, it increases. So, as per the 
choice of the properties with regard to the hardness or toughness. If we need higher hardness, we will be selecting the lower uh, tempering temperature. If we want uh, the higher toughness and less, somewhat lesser hardness will be also ok, then we will be choosing the uh, higher um, a tempering temperature. So, as per the requirement say if th this is the tempering temperature chosen from this tempering temperature. Uh, now, uh, embrittlement can take place in some of the steels uh, uh, during the uh, tempering uh, due to the two regions. One is uh, like uh, the tempering is done in the critical temperature like some of the steels are sensitive for uh, embrittlement if they are tempered over a certain range of the temperature. And uh, so, uh, how long means the, the, the time of holding at that temperature and the temperature. So, basically temperature and time both uh, affects the, the extent of embrittlement. If, if the tempering is being done in that sensitive temperature range or critical temperature range which is leading to the embrittlement, then, uh, then it will be leading to the uh, Im uh, embrittlement of the steel. But again it is affected by the two aspects, how long we are holding at that temperature and after holding that what cooling rate is being adopted. So, if, uh, uh, if the tempering is being done in the critical temperature range, in that critical temperature range which causes the embrittlement, then uh, high cooling rate after holding at that critical temperature and uh, um, uh, shorter uh, soaking period in that critical temperature, shorter soaking period in that critical temperature. Both these aspects will be reducing the extent of embrittlement due to the tempering. Uh, embrittlement. So, uh, the one uh, thing is that uh, the tempering embrittlement can happen in two ways. One, when tempering is done critical temperature, then uh, followed by slow cooling leads to that uh, temper embrittlement. Uh, and if the soaking time is less or the cooling rate is high, then the ex effect of the temper embrittlement will be somewhat lower. The another type of uh, mm, the embrittlement, another reason for uh, uh, another way by which embrittlement of the steel in, uh, in during the tempering which can happen is uh, like slow cooling after tempering. Even if it is not in the sensitive temperature range, uh, but if it is uh, if it is cooled slowly then this also leads to the embrittlement. So, here the high cooling rate it is the cooling rate only that affects the extent of embrittlement. In general, higher cooling rate reduces the effect of the embrittlement. Uh, as far as the effect is concerned, uh, so in this case basically the cooling rate especially with uh, uh, 375, uh, uh, 350 to 575 degree centigrade, this is the temperature range in which cooling rate is crucial. If the cooling rate is done fast in this temperature band, then the extent of effect of embrittlement during the tampering can be uh, reduced. Now, the primary reason for the embrittlement uh, means the temper embrittlement is attributed to the, uh, this is uh, attributed to the formation of the uh, undesirable uh, precipitates. So, uh, so uh, the main reason behind the embrittlement is due to the uh, whatever carbon is rejected from the tempering of the martensite, it leads to the formation of unfavorable uh, precipitates, unfavorable precipitates. So, this uh, uh, may be in form of the carbides or other intermetallic compounds. Uh, so, uh, whenever the temper embrittlement takes place, it increases the ductile to brittle transition temperature also and the extent of the sensitivity for the temper embrittlement with regard to the microstructure is concerned. The maximum sensitivity exists during the tempering when we are having the martensitic structure and uh, the extent of sensitivity is somewhat lower when we have banetic structure. So, the a temper embrittlement when a structure is banetic uh, is somewhat less and further lower when the structure is perlitic. So, uh, the 
temporary embrittlement sensitivity will be maximum when the martensite is tempered thereafter bennett is tempered and thereafter tempering when tempering is done and the structure is primarily the perlitic then the possibility for the temporary embrittlement is somewhat lower now uh, we will see the another type of the embrittlement which is a 350 degree centigrade embrittlement and uh, this kind of the embrittlement is so 350 degree centigrade embrittlement uh, this happens especially in case of the HSLA steels and it is due to the tempering of the tempering of martensite and uh, it leads to the precipitation of when uh, so tempering of the martensite will be leading to the rejection of the carbon and the carbon uh, leads to the precipitation of the Fe3C and if these precipitates at the grain boundary then this causes the embrittlement of uh, the steel. Uh, then uh, there is a 450 to 500 degree centigrade embrittlement. This is mainly observed in case of the ferritic stainless steel. And uh, when the steel, uh, this kind of the steel is exposed uh, in this sensitive temperature range for longer period, it forms the two types of the intermetallic compounds. Two types of the intermetallic compounds IMCs. One is which is uh, rich in Fe with chromium and another is uh, uh, rich in chromium with iron. So, both these will be leading to the increase in hardness, uh, increase in strength, reduction in toughness, reduction in uh, ductility of the steel. Now, uh, the another one, uh, the next embrittlement is the sigma phase embrittlement. Sigma phase embrittlement is primarily observed in high chromium steels like austenitic stainless steel and the ferritic stainless steel. The chromium content has to be greater than the 18 percent. So, which under the favorable conditions forms the sigma phase and the sigma phase is an uh, intermetallic compound which uh, will have the higher concentration of the iron and chromium both and the hardness is also high. So, uh, sigma phase is basically the iron chromium uh, compound which uh, uh, will have the uh, carbon also and uh, this uh, uh, will have the hardness HRC is the 68.5. So, it is quite hard. Uh, but uh, uh, since in the, in the stainless steel whether it is a ASS or FSS if it precipitates under the favorable temperature conditions of exposure then the precipitation of this one uh, basically the sigma phase uh, this increases the notch sensitivity. Notch sensitivity means this will facilitate the nucleation of the cracks and their growth. Uh, at the same time, uh, but uh, it does not affect the hardness, there is no effect on the hardness, there is no effect on the strength, but the notch toughness or the notch sensitivity is high when the sigma phase is present and it is formed under the favorable conditions of exposure like sensitive temperature range for this is 560 to the 980 degree centigrade and it can be formed uh, and this kind of the effect uh, means the uh, effect on the uh, no sensitivity is especially at the room temperature. At the room temperature we may find the reduction in toughness, uh, but other properties are not much affected. If the exposure of the stainless steel is above the 250 degree centigrade, then the sigma phase formation does not uh, adversely affect the performance of the steels. Uh, there are two conditions under which it is uh, formed. This is the sensitive temperature range in which it is uh, formed. and when the steel is cooled slowly, slow, slow cooling uh, in the temperature range of 1088 to 1145 degree centigrade followed by the water quenching and then reheating in the temperature range of the 560 to 980 degree centigrade more precisely 850 degree centigrade then it is a formation is encouraged. So, uh, 
this is how we can see that there are various aspects, there are various unfavorable metallurgical transformations uh, which will be taking place in the steels when they are given exposure under the different uh, kind of the conditions. So, basically uh, now I will I'll summarize this presentation. Basically in this presentation we have talked about that there are three aspects that uh, leads to the increase in strength and hardness at the same time reduction in toughness and ductility takes place and uh, these uh, will be there in form of uh, exposure of the steel uh, in the unfavorable range of the temperature either during the manufacturing like heat treatment or during the service or steel is subjected to the, um, the deformation then under the unfavorable composition of the steel condition it can lead to the embrittlement. Similarly, when the steel is given the exposure of uh, unfavorable environments like uh, uh, stress corrosion or like hydrogen like liquid metal or uh, the neutron uh, exposure in the neutron environment then all these will also be leading to the embrittlement of the steels and uh, eventually during the service these may be causing the brittle fracture of the component. So, for failure analysis we need also to see if there is had there has been any modification in properties of the steels due to such kind of the embrittlements. Thank you for your attention.